think in any time of uh, transformational change, there is an opportunity to grow your business. And there's an opportunity to do that because there are people who are going to be wounded by the processes that they're in. One of the benefits of being at GTA is we're part of a larger organisation. Um, we've got great financial backing. We're well positioned with cash. We've got a strong ability to withstand this storm. So we see the opportunity for us is to grow over the next six to 18 months. I, I think that it's very hard to predict about the future, but I think we will be in for a couple of very rough years. But it's not all doom and gloom, and I think that's very important. I think there are opportunities as well. We are in the mid-market sector of the industry, and I think with the mid-market sector, there are opportunities ahead of us. I think in good times, people buy up to the mid-market segment. In bad times, like the ones that we are going to see, people will buy down from the five-star and the first-class segments. So I think for us, I think there are always opportunities. But when things are rough, I think that is up to management again to show creativity in terms of making more creative products, making sure that you are more cost efficient. Um, so there are always opportunities and I think... And do you have any major success stories that you could tell me about at the moment? I would say most recently um, at the World Tourism Day, which was at the end of September, we had the UNWTO who launched Climate Solutions, which uh, is based on a dot .travel URL, climatesolutions.travel. We're also seeing large destinations moving this way, Argentina.travel and El Salvador.travel. Okay. Uh, Laura, it's a very confused position at the moment, in, and particularly in the, in the wake of the demise of a number of airlines, and uh, particularly Excel, uh, the market seems very confused. Can you bring any clarity to it? <laughs> I don't know if I can bring clarity because I think the point is it is confused and what the Excel failure has really done is to put it on the map um, to say you know this is what's happening in practice do we understand what the legal position is and the answer is in some cases yes very straightforward like the example we were talking about family of four going on holiday 499 per person including flights straightforward but it's all the variance in between and I think this is why there's so much um, momentum behind the suggestion that we need legislative change so that people do understand and I don't just mean the consumer understands but the trade itself understands. You know, 15 years or so ago um, holidays were sold by a tour operator, a tour operator fell into TOMS would probably also fall within the package travel directive. Um, VAT would be paid and there was relatively little debate about whether TOMS was applicable in those circumstances. As the industry has changed so the issues which need to be considered have changed and certainly you know bed banks and other online intermediaries selling perhaps a single product um, will often sell that product as an agent um, and there's an argument that somebody selling as an agent um, is not required to use the TOMS. So there is a big debate ongoing as to whether that is actually correct um, and what does agency actually mean um, in this context. So it is something that certainly HMRC are known to be looking at very closely because they perceive it as a risk area, a loss of revenue. I'd like to think it was up to us whether or not uh, governments do something about their borders. I'm not questioning the fact that governments should have borders. I'm just questioning the nature of the welcome given to tourists at those borders. At the moment, people are made to feel profoundly unwelcome, even as they arrive in a country. Um, they're not actually given anything like a farewell either. And these are the sort of things that countries ought to be looking at urgently if they're interested in attracting the enormous wealth that tourists bring them.